Hi, I'm Oliver from Origami Digital, and this video is for a use case of VDBs. Let's make a cloud bank. We're going to start with a simple object here, just a 200 by 200, 10 meters. But if we were to convert that into a VDB, it would obviously just be a very flat VDB. Now we have a couple ways to distort the object, would be via displacement map or nodal displacement. But if you wanted to have it more controllable, let's use one of the new tools, and it's called Metamorphic. Now we can go in here, we can change to Sculpt, and let's adjust the size a little bit, and just sculpt, you know, certain, you know, heights and depths, you know, just generally change the object. And again, this is just for the example video, I'm going to make this very quick. Uh, obviously, you can spend a lot of time on it in many different ways. It's just one of the things to show it off. I'm going to disable Sculpt here. We can now go into the Scene Editor, and let's disable the object completely. Uh, so that it's no longer rendered and no longer seen in OpenGL. Now to convert it to a VDB, we're going to add a null, and we're going to go to the object properties, and since this is a uh, smoke or fog volume, we're going to change to open VDB here, go into the node editor, and we already know that the first thing we want to do is we want to convert the mesh to the fog volume. We go to the VDB tools here, go to mesh to volume, and uh, doing so, bringing up the UI, changing the target mesh to the cube object. It's going to be a fog volume. Now, this is important. The voxel size right now is 5 centimeters, which obviously on a 200 meter grid would be huge and a lot of voxels. Um, so you don't want to do that. So let's just change it to something more like 1 meter. The world coordinates. And if we pipe that in to scattering, we can now we could render it. But uh, let's uh, look at the options here real quick. Um, the display options were just going to be much faster than in VPR. Uh, before we do that, the step size here is 100 millimeter, also way too small. Let's change that to what our voxel size was, one meter. We can immediately see the uh, grid here. Turn on, we have piped it into scattering, so let's turn on the scattering view, and we can see that we have a sort of hilly, smoky uh, area. But um, if we were to render this now, you'll be able to see that it's really just a solid mass, which is not what we want. So we can introduce some noise. So let's add some VDB noise here. And we're going to need a procedural. And we're going to pick the turbulence option. Let's do 100 so that we can see the difference here. Do this at 0.65. Uh, make sure that the foreground color is white. It, it's just going to give you more contrast for the noise. Noise also would be too small, so let's make this, uh, let's say, 10 meters by 10 meters by 10 meters. Plug the value into noise, plug the grid into grid, and the grid output back into the scattering grid. And what we should see now when you update the timeline is that you can actually see a little bit of the undulation in the clouds. Uh, so that's all nice and dandy. Let's position our camera a little bit different. So. Move in here, and again, this is something that you wanted to do in this view. You wouldn't want to do it in VPR. It would just get too slow, and you can't interactively uh, move around anymore. But for the purpose of this, let's just say this is good. Um, for obviously a larger cloud bank, you need a larger volume. But um, I wanted to keep the rendering times here to a minimum, so let's just uh, go with that. Um, we're also going to pipe this into the absorption grid. And we're going to change the color of the absorption grid here to something like, uh, let's take a little bit yellowish, which will give us more of a blue tone. And if we, we're going to change also the environment light to the distant light to an environment light here, uh, put it at one, and maybe even at Control F7, we're going to add the new uh, Sun Sky that's included in Lightwave 2019 and just change the intensity here to something like 3, not quite as bright. And if we were to hit F9, or not F9, but if we just enable VPR, let's see what we're ending up with. Uh, the one thing you might want to do is uh, change the interpolator, because you're going to see a lot of blockiness. Uh, we're going to change that to quadratic. And very quickly, you can see some of the blockiness here now, um, but with the interpolators change to quadratic, you're going to get rid of most of this. Um, if you're not, then that simply means that your scale 
uh, of the, the absorption scale and scattering scale is just simply too high and it's filling out too much of the voxel uh, versus blending between the two. But um, as you can see here, that's already starting to look pretty cool. Um, of course, we're seeing just a black uh, plane here and, and this is the sun sky. And so let's say we're happy with that, but we're missing uh, a couple things. Now, uh, before we move on also, if you wanted to get more more noise in here, again, you can add smaller noise scales, you know, to any of this. And you have, you, again, you have con complete control um, about, you know, what noise is, or you can add another additional noise on top of that. You have complete control over that. But one of the things here that, that really is missing is, um, you know, something that you've probably guessed already, it's it's uh, the Hulk. And so we're going to go in here and we're going to add the Hulk. And it's it's very important because what we're going to do is we're going to scale him up because he's too small right now for our scene. So we're going to do, let's say, 60 by 60 by 60. And so maybe even a little bit larger, 80 by 80 by 80. And so we're going to move him up in position. And we don't want him just to be like this, but we want him to be created out of a cloud too. And instead of the Hulk, obviously, this could be any objects that you wanted to add, uh, floating bunnies, um, anything that you want it to be. Um, and you want them to be as clouds. How do we do that? Um, we simply, initially, we're going to disable him here because we don't want him to render as is. But we're going to go into our, uh, into our fog volume here. And all we, do, all we have to do is simply add them to the mesh to volume uh, of the original grid. Uh, to do that, we're just going to copy and paste, select the Hulk in here. And again, keep in mind that the voxel sizes within a VDB have to match. So this also has to be one. Because I copied it, it obviously is one. If you added a new one by default, it would be 0 0.05. You want to make sure that you change it to one or that you pipe in a scalar into both of them that's going to obviously change both of them at the same time. Now to combine them, we're going to add a Boolean or a CSG operation. And in the CSG operation, we just have to by default, oops, by default, the option is union, which is exactly what we want. And then we just pipe that grid into the noise grid right here. And if we now look back to what we see in the viewport, once we update the frame, is that you now also see the whole grid as clouds. We're going to quickly do a quick look and see what that actually looks like. And you know you have to keep in mind also that our noise was as a 10 meter scale, it might be a little bit too large, or it might be cutting too much of the Hulk, uh, depending on what you want. But you, it's completely changeable. You, nothing is set in stone, um, so it's procedurally very easy to to change these sort of things. And so with this now, you have uh, the Hulk added. Again, you can see some of the blockiness. And this, in this particular case, is most likely because the volumes are filled out too much. So you can quickly change the scale here. Um, you can also do that, obviously, in the node editor. And just keep in mind, when you make some of these changes with a lot of volumes and a large scale, it's going to become uh, much slower you know, to update these. Um, but you'll, you'll get a hang out of it at, at, at some point in time. And that's essentially, you know, how you, how you create, you know, cloudscapes like this. Now, the one thing that you'll notice is that our clouds conform exactly to the original shape uh, that we have had. And that is because you're simply piping, if we're looking back into our node editor here, you're simply piping a noise into an existing field in order to have clouds go past this boundary, uh, you would have to do something called uh, advection. And to set that up is very easy as well. Um, all you have to do is add a velocity field. And for that, typically, you'd want to be, um, you want to disable VPR. So let's just do that real quick. Come on. So here's a velocity field, but uh, we still have VPR enabled. Let's just disable that because it's going to slow everything down quite a bit. So once VPR goes away, there we go. So we need a velocity field and we need advection, an advection field. And you can see here that uh, the, the advection field actually requires a level set grid. However, we have done everything here as volume objects. So that's not going to work. Um, now there is a tool that converts fog to level set. 
However, I tend to use it not on large scenes just because it, it will get slow um, and there's a faster way to do this. And the faster way essentially is to, instead of, I'm going to disable real quick the viewport. So we are just going to keep this, the entire operation, as a level set um, on this as well. And so again, we have a level set now. We have a level set that goes into here. We can take the, the advection on our grid here. And you will see you get no error message now. Um, you can take the velocity grid, which will be piped into this. We need a reference grid, which is essentially just a bounding box of the scene. Again, we can kind of take uh, our Boolean operation, or you can make a cube that essentially defines the bounding box uh, for the velocity. We're going to use another procedural here. Procedural and make this a ripple just because it has some animation changes, but it could really, again, be anything. Um, so we're just going to have some 0.2. Uh, wavelength, we'll leave it at, let's say, uh, 3 meters. Just again, you got to remember our scale that we're at. Um, we'll make this white, and we'll make the scale here, let's say, 5 meters. And we pipe the value, oh, not, we pipe the bump into velocity, because it needs a vector. And then at the very end, because if we were to plug that in now, this is now still a level set, which, you know, we are in a fog environment here. We simply go to the VDB nodes here and do a two fog volume and plug our end result into that and then plug the fog result into our absorption and scale. Um, the advection is a time-based uh, filter. So in order to do some advection, you essentially go to the beginning of the frame. You can just let it run for a few frames. <clears throat> And again, you know, depending on what you're doing, depending on the size of the grid, it's going to be slower or faster. Depending on the detail of the grid, it's going to be slower and faster, uh, just depending, uh, you know, how your setup is. But the thing is also because in, if you are using this as a static grid, you're really only doing this once to create the uh, VDB, and then you're saving off the VDB as a fog volume that you can then at any point in time load back in. So just going to let it run another three more frames. That's probably going to be enough to see some sort of variation. And let's just say the next frame, that's going to be good enough. <clears throat> and what should have happened is that we're essentially just a little bit outside of the initial you know, area that's essentially otherwise constrained by, uh, by, the, by the original object that we're feeding the noise through. So I just enabled the display again. Let's see what we get when it comes up. And again, yeah, you don't see that much of it. Uh, it over time, if you let it run a couple more frames, the, the noise would actually go outside of the boundary of this. You can see that there is more, uh, more things happening than what we originally had. Obviously, the noise gets diluted as well. Um, so you could pipe the noise back in afterwards if, if uh, that's what you needed. So, you know, because I'm diluting the noise grid as well, or, or infecting the noise grid as well. What you really want to do is you want to probably pipe this into the, um, you want to pipe this into the level set and then add the noise afterwards. So we can do that real quick by just uh, going back here. Uh, so the, in this particular case, we pipe the, the original, uh, not the noise version into here. And now we're going to take the fog volume and put this into here. So now what we're going to get is if we uh, go one more frame here, actually, we'd have to simulate, um, but let's just go one more frame. It should apply the noise again. But you will also see that the edges are no longer as sharp as they used to be. Here's our noise back. And you could, at that point in time, if you choose to do so, if you say that is done, we can save this out so we can Put a saver in here, plug it to the very back of it, and we can save this uh, frame, for example, here. Um, one second, we'll just make a folder here, uh, BDB export. And in this particular case, we don't want, you can change it to sequence or frame, we just want one frame. 
And once that is done, you can, again, you just click Save. And whenever that is being saved, you can see now that we have a frame at, at this particular case. It's actually pretty small. Um, so that's uh, essentially the same thing. We could now remove all of this if we say, you know, we're okay. Of course, you don't have to remove it, but we're just going to remo remove it. And we can add a open BDB node in here, select the uh, select the BDB here, select density grid, which is there by default, and we'll just plug that into scattering and absorption. And now we have something that is going to be much faster to load and much faster to work with. Essentially, you see the exact thing that uh, we had the entire time set up. And that's how you can do a quick cloud or very modifiable, modifiable cloud uh, setup. Um, Nice and easy. It's really not as complicated. It's a lot it takes a lot longer to explain than once you get into the habit of doing it.